Hello, my name is Camille and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Pixel TC252 external Intel volumeter that I have right here, which is invaluable for time lapses, astrophotography, taking pictures of yourself and probably many more scenarios. I will tell you exactly why this is the external Intel volumeter that I have chosen for myself and also run briefly through all the functionalities that this little accessory is capable of. And also why I can highly recommend this intervolometer for anybody using any brand of cameras. But first, let's roll the intro. All right, so before we start talking about this particular intervolometer, let me just quickly say to you, why would you even need a device like an intervolometer? For instance, if you're taking time lapses, then you need to take a single exposure every fixed amount of time. And you need to take hundreds of exposures that you will be able to then stitch together, edit in Lightroom to get the most dynamic range out of the raw pictures and don't use the built-in time-lapse mode in your camera. That's the way to go on most cameras. And not every camera has a built-in intervolometer. And even if your camera camera has one, it might still be very limited. I actually have a separate video about the limitations of the internal intervolometer on Canon cameras. So if you have a Canon camera, definitely check out this video to see why an external one is still far superior. So let's get down to business. Why I would recommend this one over proprietary Canon's or Nikon's intervolometers. Well, for starters, the Canon or Nikon intervolometers are very expensive. I actually looked it up on bnhphotovideo.com yesterday and I saw that Canon's intervolometer costs around 134 US dollars, whereas the Nikon's cost about uh, $150, but this little piece costs about 50 bucks on Amazon, only 50 bucks, 50 US dollars, which is significantly cheaper. It's like two or three times as cheap. And you can use this intervolometer with pretty much any camera. You can use it with a Nikon, you can use it with a Canon, you can use it with a Sony. And even if you have the same brand, for instance, Canon, different Canon cameras have different uh, sockets to actually plug in an external shutter release. And the cool thing about this one is that you actually need a separate cable that you can detach from it. So you can switch those cables in between your camera. So you can have one cable for your Canon camera, you can have another cable for your Nikon camera, but you only ever need one intervolometer. So it is very, very useful. So you can just plug it in like this and then plug in the other end into the camera and you have to check for yourself what kind of socket does your camera have for uh, external shutter release and that's the cable that you have to get. Uh, this device, the Pixel TC252, has a 2.5 millimeter input jack right here. This is like the standard headphone jack but the smaller version of it. Also one more thing about intervolometers in general and this is the information that I found on, on LR Timelapse website somewhere. I will link to this article down below in the description so you can check it out if you want. The problem is that every intervolometer when it releases the shutter, first it sends the autofocusing signal, then it waits for the camera to autofocus, and then it releases the shutter, which causes an unwanted delay. And if you are time lapsing, you don't want the camera to be autofocusing because you want to lock off your focus before you start shooting your time lapse, and then you want to just take pictures. So if your external intervolometer is forcing the AF signal and this wait time before it actually releases the shutter, it might cause an unwanted delay in your shooting intervals. And with this particular one, it is actually down to minimum, the AF signal. And if you want it to be even faster, you can actually cut one of the cords. Again, I will uh, link down to a blog post down below in the description where the guy from LR Timelapse actually explains how to, how to hack this, the, this intervolometer to be even faster so that it doesn't even send the AF signal to the camera. So I will link it down below if you want to check it out. This intervolometer is also very convenient to use because it uses uh, two AAA batteries, which are just standard batteries. You can get them anywhere. By the way, I have been using this in cold conditions. I have been using this intervolometer in like sub-zero temperatures in the mountains and it never died on me. I've been shooting time lapses like two hours long or something and I have never had problems with the batteries on this device. So for 50 bucks you can get a well, the build quality is, you know, it's not the best. It's it's plasticky, it's, you know, it's made in China, etc. It's very lightweight, which might be a good thing. 
but I'm telling you this device is very very reliable. So let me actually start up this device and let me show you quickly what kind of functions does this have. Okay so once you start it up you can see the pixel logo sort of rotating around here and if you press this right arrow here you can switch between different modes. It might be tricky to actually see what's on the LCD, you might want to use a different angle than straight on, but you should probably be able to read anything on this on this little LCD. And also if you're shooting at night you can actually hold down this button to actually illuminate the LCD which is pretty neat if you're shooting some kind of a time lapses during the night like Milky Way time lapse or something like this. And here you have a couple of modes, you have a single exposure mode where you can just click this button here and just fire away whenever you feel like it. Then you have this multi-mode, which means that if you press the shutter release, it actually takes one picture every second. So you can just keep holding it and the camera will be taking pictures every second. Then you have the bulb mode, which basically means that you can press it once, the camera starts shooting, you can see the timer going on here and your camera built in uh, exposure mode will not let you take exposures longer than 30 seconds so if you want to take exposures longer than that time you need something like this and then if you want to stop you just press again and the exposure is done. Also there's a delay here so you can dial in your delay and you can customize it fully because on most cameras you're only limited to like 2 seconds or 10 seconds self timer but with this intervalometer you can set it to any amount of time that you might want so this is very handy. And here we go to actually interval shooting. So we have a delay. We can set that for instance, uh, before we start, we want a delay of let's say 10 seconds for whatever reason. Then we have the long exposure here. We can actually select how long of an exposure do we want. So for instance, if we are shooting time lapses of the Milky Way, we might want to select here something like 30 seconds so that the camera will actually use the bulb mode and take the exposures of 30 seconds or 40 seconds or more. Then we go to the interval and here if you press this middle button, you can use the uh, up and down arrows to actually select your interval. For instance, if I'm shooting a holy grey time lapse like a sunset, I usually select something like 7 seconds and then you can just hit enter by pressing this middle button right here and then we have n and n is just the number of shots you can leave it at this blank uh, value here and the intervalometer will keep shooting until you stop it and then when you have all the parameters input here for the interval shooting you just hit this button which starts the interval shooting and then you can hit it again to stop it very simple very intuitive all right so like i said for 50 bucks only you can get a device that works with pretty much any brand of the camera that you might have it is packed with a lot of functionalities like single exposure multiple exposure bulb delay interval shooting you can pre-select the number of shots that you want you can set it to blank which basically fires away until you stop it which is which is very handy in some situations where you don't exactly know how long do you want to keep the time lapse running and it is fully customizable you can use it at night with this little illumination of the lcd it's super handy i can i can i can highly recommend it to pretty much anybody that wants to start using uh shooting time lapses or something something like this or long exposures at night so yeah pixel tc252 i will put the link down below in the description if you want to check it out that's basically it for this video if you liked it make sure to smash the like button down below it really helps me out also consider subscribing to my channel because i upload new content pretty much every single week and i usually do photography tutorials filmmaking tutorials drone flying tutorials sometimes travel videos or vlogs but not everything it just revolves around photography or stuff that you can do with your camera so if any of that is up your alley to consider subscribing and i will see you next time bye bye